Georgia State Lunatic Idiot and Epileptic Asylum became the world's largest mental institution by the 1960s, leading to a myriad of problems. We're definitely like deep into it now. Like there's no like being like, oh, sorry, we don't know where we are. No, this looks like it's not a like, yeah. Look at all the cart curtains. This one is like, please come in. <laughs> Like too no, Neglect, abuse, and suspicious death of patients. Actually, after researching this, I'm 90% positive that a lot of this was what American Horror Story Asylum was based off. We're exploring the Powell Building, a main structure where they housed and treated patients. Why is like, the grass so short? Yeah, southern grass is different. The asylum opened in 1842, its first patient referred to as Tillman B. He arrived on foot by force. Oh, God. They had bound his hands with rope and tied it to a walking horse with his wife and other family members in the carriage. This guy was the first one in, first one out, tragic. It wasn't even a year later when he died of what they reported as maniacal exhaustion. And who knows what his affliction really was. They had no knowledge of mental health back then. This feels like a Call of Duty map. There's someone coming. Just stay still against the building. Big wall. If you were in any way problematic or even just a tad bit different, you were basically doomed to this place. It might, I don't know if it's locked in. Oh, Most patients arrived by train. The asylum was the very last stop. The first director, Dr. Thomas Green, under his leadership, the patients truly were intended for treatment and release back into everyday civilian life, even if that's not at all how things went. I can't confirm this for sure, but allegedly 29 out of the 50 first patients never checked out, meaning they died in their care. Come the mid-1860s, Civil War veterans were coming in by the hundreds with PTSD, before PTSD was even a thing that we knew about. I can so imagine this being exactly what it was used for. Mm -hmm. This resulted in a population explosion and extreme overcrowding, something that was never really fixed. Come 1872, there was a grisly 112 patients per one single physician. So everybody is getting neglected. It gets worse in 1877 when payment is no longer expected. So everyone's just being sent there for ridiculous reasons, just because no one wants to deal with them. The hospital was rebranded as Georgia Lunatic Asylum by Dr. Powell, who is now in control. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't think that, like, During the 1900s, overcrowding was still so much of a problem. You see, like, how the ceiling's giving in there? Oh my god. I just don't want to, like, die. Not only was everyone being neglected and abused just to keep control of the situation, but tuberculosis was running rampant. The institution gained such a terrible reputation that parents used to tell kids if you don't behave we'll send you to Milledgeville and that was enough to scare them shitless. So it's like it up. By the 1950s it's rebranded again as Milledgeville State Hospital. While the name might have improved the horrors blew up. It was nearing becoming the largest mental facility in the entire world. In order to keep them in check, they implemented stuff like lobotomies, insulin shock, which is repeatedly injecting a large dose of insulin to produce a coma for days or even weeks. As you see in the movies and TV shows, electroconvulsive therapy back then without a painkiller. It used to hurt like a bitch. It was used to make people comply on people who were gay. It was used on people who were just a little bit different, anything. Do you guys want to just sit down and make a plan like the good old cousins used to? Yes, yeah. If we get in here and we get caught, we're going to be so fucked. Oh shit, that would be a pretty good way in. It'd be hard to get out. Not only that, but there were children kept in cages, forced steam and ice baths, straitjackets, nauseants, forced sterilization. 
1959, a reporter named Jack Nelson basically infiltrates, observes, and then writes an article that reveals the horrors of experimental drugs being given without the patient's consent or any of the family's consent. Some of these were even kids. That's so true. Here, so I can like. This is the ultimate. You're gonna snag your clothes. It basically, single-handedly, took down the institution. Does that sound familiar? My editor knows I came here to write a story. And boy, do I have a great scoop for him now. You got it. Nelson witnessed an untrained nurse performing major surgery without any kind of supervision whatsoever, and the place was so understaffed that the patients were helping run the asylum. Not to mention a lot of the staff and doctors were drunk. The guy even wins a legit Pulitzer Prize for his article. Come the 1960s, politicians and legislators are finally getting involved, so the amount of patients is starting to dwindle. It's not like a lock thing, it's like a key. A lock? Yeah. Where's the key? Eventually, 200 buildings of the 1,700-some acre campus were left abandoned. But did the abuse stop there? No, absolutely not. Come 2007, they were called out once more by media. An article referred to Central State Hospital as a hidden shame of Georgia. It talked of all of the suspicious deaths that have been happening in the hospital recently. A 14-year-old girl was throwing up coagulated blood for hours and no one did anything. There have been no patients accepted past 2010. They sent most of their patients off to community institutions but they kept about 180 some forensic patients. They committed some crime, but were found unfit mentally. Jesus. Nine buildings in use out of 200. This place really, really is a ghost town. After researching all of this, it really did put the journey of mental health in perspective. I didn't even get into the racial injustice of the place yet, but I will in the next video when we explore what used to be the segregated ward for black patients until it was burned down and then eventually turned into a men's prison.